Alright, welcome back guys. So, for today we're just gonna wrap the whole animation plus controller plus physics and mix it all up after all these weeks of, you know, trying to do something. And we're gonna start with our main guy. So, in our guy, we had our animation state. I made a new class called a camera follower and I added this. So what this is, is basically, if we go here, we made our camera controller a while back and we had a few settings. So we had an invert, add, the look at, the radius, rotations, and the max height. So I copied a few stuff from here and just copy pasted here to my new camera follower because I want to keep the original, but I want to make some edits to it. And this one's going to have, um, actual third person controller so remember how in third person controllers most games would look something like this the character would be moving around and you have like a middle reticule or like a little aim button that you were to move around and then the character would always be here so that's what we're gonna do so once you have this stuff in i also copied the main camera mouse position and point over here and i made a new vector 3 and i called it c point which is going to be camera point new point is going to be for something else and camera point is going to be for something else and i also kept the angle and height and we're just going to add two new things uh the one is the object that we're going to follow which is going to be a little dot or the aim thing that we're going to follow and the object to rotate which is going to be what we're going to rotate around which is the character itself now if we go back here and we actually uh, run it and componentize it so once it becomes a component we could just click and drag it onto our character with the animation now the object to follow we're gonna have to make it ourselves but before we do that object to rotate so the object that we rotate around is going to be the boy or the mannequin man object to follow is going to be very simple just right click create and get a dummy node click it wherever we're going to reset its uh, position to zero, zero, uh, 0 and I think 1.5 just looks perfect it's uh, it's the height of the neck and that's where I want it to move around and I'm going to call this camera follow now what I'm also going to do just in case if you won't be able to see it uh, we're going to create another node dummy and for that I'm going to make it a zero, 10 meters away, and zero. So it's going to be like our aim. That's what we're looking at. All right. And we can just call that aim. And that's our object. So we're just going to follow the object, or that object's going to be the one that we're going to be focused on. All right. Now that we have it set up, let's actually do this. Now, before writing all this code, we're just going to take from the old one. So in the old one, we had this guy. We're going to copy it, paste it here, that's good, and then for the rest of it, we're actually just going to copy and paste all of it, and then we're going to change it later on. So we're done with this, and now we're over here in the camera follower. So first things first, let's fix it up, we don't have it into Y, we don't have this, and then this has to be changed. So um, how are we going to do this? All right, so for endpoint, what we're going to do is first, uh, we're going to change this to the end, 1.5 that I was talking about. And then for our uh, endpoint here, what we're going to change it to is the object that we're going to rotate around. So object to rotate. All right, the computer is up. And over here, we're just going to mute these two because we're going to do this later on. So now we have our endpoint, which is that little point in the middle that's rotating around and at a certain fixed uh, height. Now, we're not going to change the height yet because I don't want it moving up and left. I'm going to have the camera move up and left still staring at it. So you'll, you'll see the difference immediately. So now that we have endpoint, let's make the C point. So C point... Instead of writing it all, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And for this, we're just going to change this to C point. Now for here, in C point, C point's the one that we're going to add the height to. So that's perfectly fine. Now what's going to be the difference with C point? Um, we're going to first of all 
add a minus 20 to the angle so it has a little change. Now we can also add, I remember, um, let's say like a bracket here and a bracket here and we could add a plus two if we want to. So in my case, just to make it easy for me, I'm gonna add a plus two. Now, some of you guys might not like it, some of you guys might like it, so uh, play around with this plus two and maybe plus one once in a while. Now, uh, second point, we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do copy and paste it. So most of the time it's just copy and paste, but for this one, we are going to do one more little thing and that is the camera itself so the camera is going to be looking at this point all right and then for this one so let's just remove this for this one is going to be object to follow and get its world position and I think that's gonna be it. So in terms of how I think about it, give it a second and not too bad. We're still looking around at it, but the object itself is not. Let's close it for a second and let's go back here, save it, check our camera follow. Sweet. So sometimes you'll notice that the camera just doesn't work and sometimes it does work. So it really depends on <laughs> the game's mood sometimes. So uh, for the camera follower, what I'm going to do is for the position, I'm going to make it to a one. All right. And now, there we go. Now we're rotating around that point. but we can't see that point. So what are we gonna do? I am going to write a little visualizer script. Now, if you don't have visualizer enabled, what we're gonna do is uh, you can go here, unit gen, I can't spell, visualizer, mode and equals to unigen visualizer, mode that's table enabled and that's gonna enable it set mode all right and that's going to set it to that depth test enabled and then now let's actually make that note so how do we do this it was a uh, unigen visualizer and then render point 3d and then inside this function it requires a few arguments the first one we're going to do is the object itself that we are looking at so the object to follow all right we're going to do its get then the arrows then get again get child and then child would be child zero and then do the arrows <laughs> and then we get the world position of that object. Then in terms of size, 0 0.1, excuse me, 0 0.1f. And in terms of the vector four, we're gonna do a unigen math vector four. Why did it go all the way there? Vector four underscore. I guess black should be good. And I think that should be it. Let me just check it. All right, so it's staring at the object itself and that's where we are staring at. So let me just close this. All right, now, all right, what are we missing? Ah, yes, I forgot to actually do the more important stuff. So now that we actually did the end point, now we're gonna actually move the point itself. So, the object to follow dot get, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press dot and then get again, and then do the arrows, and then we're gonna set its world position, world position, to be the end point. 
now the object is moving around that position. So that's one. And then the next one is hmm, the point itself to move because that point may move around, but it's still looking at the same position. So what we're going to do is the object to follow dot get dot get again because first we're getting the component and now we're getting the object and do that get child that would be the child itself and then the arrows and then it is set world position okay and we're gonna do the same endpoint but we're gonna add a uh, a difference so we're gonna add um, unigen math vector 3 and then put some brackets and inside here just put some commas so now we have a constructor so we're gonna do um, let's see a 5 radius difference so 551 five, that remember the X and Y always have to be the same and we multiply it so this is a scalar rather than just being um, linear now i think that should be enough and with that everything should move properly all right so we have the thing moving correctly but our point is missing so just sometimes it does this sometimes it doesn't for some reason this point thing doesn't work sometimes it does As you can see, sometimes it just goes crazy and not working. But here we go. We got something working properly. The dot's a bit too big, so let's just make it 0.01. Uh, Hope that works. And there we go. Now we have a little reticule, and you can notice that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And there we go. Perfection. So now we have a character, we move him, and he's doing our little movements, little stuff. Now let's actually add um, the physics controller. So if you remember, we had the object dummy, which was basically just a right click uh, physics object dummy. And then we gave him a rigid body and we gave him a shape capsule and then we gave him uh, this setting so his weight was like 25 not that no friction same restitution the height I I uh, what's it called set it up so that his legs match the bottom and his little head matches the top and what I did was I just uh, moved both of these inside the object actually not both of them just the character itself inside and then we added the physics controller and if I remember correctly, everything was working with the physics control. There was nothing needed. So now let's just test it out. So we have this guy moving. If I press, he's moving. Oh my, there goes that black point. I should definitely not write that code. But anyways, now we have the guy rotating and we got this guy rotating. And then we move, run around, move, and there you go. So now we have a third person character controller set up with our animations. Now, as you can see, the guy is a little bit slidey because our friction is zero. So that's something that you're gonna play test with all the time. And yeah, so that's it. As you can see, there's also some drag because there's no friction. The guy looks like he's walking on very slippery ice, but he's not falling. Some amazing, what do we call thing. Now you can also see the difference between the run animation movement, and that's because that's how I coded it. You can always fix it. There's no problem. Now you can see how moving up and down is a lot different than what you expected because uh, if we were to move the point itself up and down you would have noticed that the character would look weird but in this it looks like there's an anchor between the point and the camera and it's being anchored to look through 
the what's it called the medium which is the point itself and that makes the camera a lot easier and a lot readable to look at now you'll also see some little problems like a little clip right here and then it just pops and that would be because the camera itself is a different type of camera if we were to go here our camera is a spectator which means it has collision and because the floor is a collisive object collisive object it's gonna collide with the floor so uh, for homework if you want you can write a code where the lower you go the closer the camera gets now again up to you but this is our basic camera um, coding I'm gonna remove this one and try it one last time all right so it's done I'm gonna take a little left start running let's move it not bad the runs not okay it's not as fast as I want it to be probably you can make him go faster but we got everything set up our main character controller is set up and this is the physics character controller so if we actually had hills and everything it would easily walk up and down without doing too many calculations of like inverse kinematics so yeah that's it for today next week we're gonna do um, world intersections basically when I'm looking at something and I can interact with that object so that's gonna be our main important one then we can actually do more things because interaction is one of the most what do we call important stuff of games there's no such thing as a fun game if you can't interact with objects so anyways I'm gonna leave you all at that and have a nice day guys see ya bye